70% of Australians say they don't want a carbon tax. Why? It appears they understand that the projected 2015 handing over of the tax to a global market will lead to an emission trading scheme driven by global banking cartel speculators, which means the tax will be whatever they, who are set to trade our tax, want it to be. In short, the tax will have no cap. Gillard's $23 per tonne is a starting price. Now listen to her carefully. She always says starting price. Australian families are being sold a tax without an upper limit. We're being asked to hand over Australian taxation sovereignty to a global banking cartel that trades incomprehensible derivatives of mass financial destruction. A cartel that has their profits and not the environment, let alone the good of the Australian people, as their sole aim. Any compensation by the government now or in the future will be futile. And the politicians know it. Inflation, policy changes and tax bracket creep will dilute the inducement being offered to introduce this tax. The cost, paid by big polluters, will be passed through to the prices of the goods you buy. Any attempt by Gillard or future governments to compensate struggling families will simply be a wealth transfer to international bankers. In the same way, the first home buyer grant drove up house prices, transferring the grant to developers. It's a tax snake eating its own tail. The carbon tax is the latest global financial bubble being blown by a predatory international banking cartel. Al Gore and his banking global mates are salivating, rubbing their hands in the wings as they wait to trade Australia's super tax. The deceptively altruistic Al Gore's company, owned with his ex-Goldman Sachs executive partner David Blood, is befittingly called, wait for it, Blood and Gore. He can't make this stuff up. Like all previous financial bubbles, this new one will blow up, creating international banking cartel-induced chaos, like we're now seeing in Europe. Europe, incidentally, does have a disastrous carbon tax and emissions trading scheme centred in the city. This is code for the one square mile of London where the banking speculators do global financial business. Savvy Australians instinctively know this recolonising tax is based on questionable science. Some 32,000 scientists, of which 9,000 are PhDs, have stated so in a global petition. See the scientists' Oregon petition for yourself here. You won't hear about these sober, rational dissidents in this debate or in the controlled mainstream media, which the censorship-free internet is teaching us can't be trusted. These eminent scientists dispute anthropogenic man-made global warming. It appears the science is not in on global warming recently sheep-dipped as climate change. We saw this when the United Nations IPCC was found to knowingly have peddled fraudulent science from the University of East Anglia when an insider with a conscience released damning emails on the fraud to rig the science. Back in Australia, Julia Gillard and Bob Brown rely on cafeteria science to push through the carbon tax that will one day fund the one world government sought by Bob Brown and which he recently came out and admitted he wants. Why was economics professor Ross Garno, a globalist world government proponent, suspiciously chosen as our chief advisor on climate change? He's a member of the shadowy International Trilateral Commission set up by David Rockefeller. See this. Is there something going on here that we're not being told? We may not have answers, but we should ask the questions. What average hard-working Australians do know is the carbon tax is to be a blatant transfer of wealth and jobs from Australian families to global banking elites using a fraudulent Enron-devised carbon casino to financially strip mine Australia. Is it any wonder 70% of Australians say they don't want this toxic tax but do want an election? The carbon tax will be like a thief in the night, creeping into every aspect of Australians' lives as international speculators ratchet it up or down at will to punish or reward nations. Once this tax is embedded into our economy, even our elected representatives won't be able to protect us from those who have weaponised the carbon tax to impose it savagely on nations who dare to resist any aspect of their government's demands certainly fits in with Bob Brown's dream, doesn't it? We all know what an appreciating or depreciating dollar can do. Imagine a tax system that can do the same, but in the hands of non-Australians. The carbon tax is ultimately about sovereignty. Australians' right to live their lives as they choose. So what can you do about this? It's important you forward this on by SMS or email. For the first time ever, you can now virally bypass the corporate controlled media to influence opinions and shape public policy by creating the news yourself.
This has been a Kuzu News presentation, where you write, comment or give us talking points, and we produce news and commentary like this from just $149. Spread them virally or to smartphones worldwide, bypassing the controlled mass media. Kuzu.com is where you can now affordably reach hearts and minds of the people. You can now push and influence political, community, corporate or social tastes in all our currently available languages and accents. You've seen the power of social media, now you've got the power to influence change. Let your unfiltered voice be heard at kuzu.com.